Hey, what's up YouTube? Houston here. And for those of you just finding my YouTube channel, welcome. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell. And for those of you that's been following me and supporting me, salute. And for my favorite patrons, always double salute. Now, for those of you that are just introduced to the business credit world, this video is going to be for you. Uh, the reason is, is because a lot of you guys that are already in business. There's a lot of knowledge out there about business credit, but some of the things I'm going to share to you may pop a navel or you may get offensive by it, you know, because what I'm going to tell you, some of you all may have already approached building your business credit um, in a certain way, and it may not have been as profitable. So, this is how you're going to learn how to build business credit fast, and you're going to learn how to get it done step by step. All right, let's move forward. Now, here's the thing. This here is very controversial for a lot of people because I'm telling people, do not create a business, your business in these states, Nevada, Wyoming, Delaware, South Dakota. Now, some of you are, Houston, how can you say that? Well, here's the thing about it, all right? I want you all to understand this. If you set up your company in either of these states, okay? And you are not actually a resident of these states. You have to pay for um you have to pay for register agent fees, right? You still have to file the taxes in that state. Uh if any other um fees come up, you still financially responsible for those fees in that state as well. Now, here's the kicker. Because you are not actually a resident in the state and any liability happens within your business, your state that you actually reside in supersedes that state's laws. So if there's any fines and stuff like that, then your state supersedes state laws supersedes these states. So you don't really have any protection. Especially I tell people if you if you're not actually doing business in one of these states for at least 6 months, it's not worth the investment. Okay? So I don't care if you're setting up a LLC, S Corp, C Corp, it's really not worth the investment. And I know some people, well what about Delaware? Well what about Delaware? Well, here's the thing about it. Most people want to go to these states because they're like, oh, they don't have any uh, state uh, income taxes, right? And they don't have any corporate taxes. That's true, right? However, they have other state fees that they charge, okay? And you still will be financially responsible for those fees as well, okay? So you just have to understand why... It's more productive for you as a new business owner or as a business owner building business credit to actually build up business credit in your own state. Set up your corporation in your own state, okay? Now, here's something else that's controversial. It's going to pop a few nables, so stick with me. Stop trying to buy a self-corporation. Look, guys, I've been in this industry a long time. OK, and one of the things that we know how to do to a T is build chef corporations. OK, we know how to build them from scratch. We know every aspect of it. But this is the thing about it. For most people, they do not need a chef corporation. And there's two main factors when dealing with chef corporations, two main factors. OK, one most of the time, people that sell you chef corporations, they don't keep up with filing the taxes, okay? They may uh, re-register the business with the state, but the federal taxes, they don't keep up with. That's number one. Number two, they don't keep active bank accounts, okay? They don't keep active bank accounts. So those are, two, are the biggest factors, but wait a minute, there's more. So I want you all to listen to this. We had a client, okay? We, as a matter of fact, we had a couple clients that decided, oh, we're going to go to Chef Corporation route, right? Now, they did not know that these Chef Corporations that they invested in 
had trade phantom trade lines, okay? Phantom dormant trade lines at that. So what that means is that these people sold them shelf corporations, okay, that already had credit cards and lines of credit that already went bad, okay? So then they decided, oh, here's an old shelf corporation. I'll just buy this one. Well, here's the thing about it. When you invested in that shelf corporation, you took on that liability as well. Okay, so if that chef corporation owed um, state taxes, if there was a lien on the corporation, if there was credit cards that was uh, that had not been paid and stuff like that, because with credit cards, statutes of limitations doesn't define. So that's the reason that I tell people stay away from chef corporations. The only reason that we actually build chef corporations um is for our high profile client. But for most people, you do not need a shelf corporation because you definitely can dig yourself in a hole. Now, some people are like, oh man, I got that. Well, here's the thing about it. Yes, you can create the uh, taxes, right? Yes, you can file the back taxes on the shelf corporation, okay? That's true. But then people get kind of greedy and know what they do? They decide, well, let me um, create some bank statements for this corporation as well. You now just created, created fraud and a crime. So now they done put you in a position, you done bought that shelf corporation with, them, for, with bank statements and stuff, but the shelf corporation never had a bank account or never had an active bank account. Now you're, now you, they done made you a criminal. This is the reason why, people, I tell you, you have to be very careful. There's a lot of guys out here, okay? They're shooting this game, do this, do that, or whatever. But at the same time, they don't give a, they don't care about you getting in any trouble. And I'm just trying to share this with you, okay? So that's step number two. And I know some people, well, man, why are you telling them that or whatever? Well, it is what it is, all right? Now. Let's talk about choosing a lendable NAICS code. This is this is so in, important. This is so important. The reason is because a lot of people they tell you, oh, create an LLC to create it, but they don't really understand about classification, about what's a high risk NAICS code. Okay, so then they're like, oh, uh, you creating a restaurant? Yeah, set up the restaurant. If you set up a restaurant, restaurants have a 98% chance of failing. 90 to 98% chance of failing. Okay? Most small businesses end up failing. It used to be five years. Now it's then within one year. Right? So we're not going to go over those numbers. I'm not going to bore you with that. But this NAICS code, if you don't understand... What's the proper NAICS code for your industry and what's the safest NAICS code or SIC code, then you need to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation before you even set up that business. Because, again, people, uh, they may be in credit repair, high risk. Transportation. <gasps> Transportation, what do you mean? Yes, high risk. Okay? I'm telling you. There's something else that I'm, I'm going to share with you in a minute as well. So, restaurants, uh, construction, uh, consulting, depends on how you word it. Again, high risk. All right? Uh, they even had daycares on the list as high risk. Right? Because, because of COVID, you know, we loan you money out, you get sued, we don't get our money back. That's how they look at it. So this is why I'm telling you, you have to be very careful with choosing the right NAICS code. Uh, again, if you need consultation, click the link in the description or go to three-way funding at HoustonMcMiller.net and set up a consultation. Now, here's something else I'm going to tell you guys. Virtual office. Oh, I got a virtual office. Oh, I got a virtual office, right? So you excited. You got a corporate office. Yay! Well, guess what? 
that corporate office that you have, that virtual office that you have, some financial institutions may turn you down because of the address. Here's the reason why. Again, you have a company that has used that virtual address in the past. So that address more likely them recycled over and over and over, right? So because the address has been recycled so many times, and those other companies that have failed, that may have got uh, credit cards, lines of credit, loans and stuff, and they defaulted on them. So now you show up with this address, right? You show up with this address, with your new company and everything, new at EIN, this information picks up from that address, okay? And now they can put it on your business credit report. And even, even though you're like, hey, this isn't my information. So you have to go through the headache of actually fighting it. So that's the reason I tell people, if you want to use an address, I would prefer you use your home address to set your corporation up at. And then use a, a mailbox, not a P.O. box, but a mailbox to do the forwarding for your corporate mail. Okay, but using a virtual address, trust me, you're asking for a headache somewhere down the line. So you have to be very careful because you'll end up possibly having phantom debt on your business credit file that you had no idea. And it's all because of somebody else's uh, past debt that used that same address. So that's the reason I'm telling you guys. Now, let's talk about banks. This is so important, so important, and a lot of people miss the mark on this, all right? Here's the, here's the thing about it. When you first set up your company, I always tell people, when you set up the business, you get the EIN. Oh, 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 let me, let me tell you all something, all right, about the EIN. So you are a DBA, and you have a... EIN that you've been working on. So you decide you want to set up a S Corp, a LLC, or C Corp, or whatever, right? You should not use that DBA EIN. The reason is, is because it can actually create an audit. Bro, tell, I've been through one of those, and you do not want that. You do not want that. Trust me. It's, it's just nerve wracking. It's frustrating. So you do not want that all because you use the wrong EIN number, okay? If you need help getting a free EIN, schedule a consultation. We'll set it up for you. We'll set the company up for you. We won't charge you a fee for the EIN. We just charge you whatever the state fees is and whatever our fee, but you will get a free EIN instead of paying somebody $150 just for an EIN. So we'll show you how to get the right EIN. NAICS code, the SIC code, and a free EIN to match the corporation. All right, so we do that at three way funding. Now, let's talk about these banks, okay? Because a lot of people don't know this, all right? I always tell people when you first open up your business bank account, you should at least, you can have multiple bank accounts, okay? So a lot of people are like, well, I have Navy Federal. Cool, that's great, you know? But here's something else. You should also be looking at opening up a bank account with one of these banks. I would say Chase or Credit One. And the reason is because they report to most of the business credit um, bureaus, right? So with Chase, Experience, Small Business, Financial Exchange, Dun & Bradstreet, and Equifax. Now, guys, would you all like to know something? There's one thing that people are not aware of and why you should have it done properly and professionally. Because here's the thing about it. When you apply for a business line of credit, a business loan, do not use Yahoo. Do not use at Gmail. Those are not professional emails. Okay. And these are things that can actually count against you. Okay, I'm not saying 100% of the time, but this is stuff that actually could count against you. So I'm telling you guys, if you're going to be in business, don't do it the cheap way. 
Do it in a proper manner where somebody is actually walking you through, communicating, and breaking all of this down and helping you understand why. It's an investment in your business. You're not just paying for something. This is an investment. So this is so important. All right. So again, talking about choosing the right bank account. It's good. The great thing about it now, uh, American Express, they offer business bank accounts through a cabbage since they own cabbage and you know cabbage they were a lender if you had bad credit they would still be able to help you get a loan all right so that was cool but here's the thing about it now american express does not report to dun and bradstreet you know where dun and bradstreet get their information from small business financial exchange okay and small business financial exchange is more important than dun and bradstreet they're more important than Dun & Bradstreet. I'm not saying that Dun & Bradstreet is not necessary. Uh, I know somebody is going to be in the comments, Dun & Bradstreet, Dun & Bradstreet. I'm not saying they're not important. But when it comes to funding, you want to go to the banks. Build a relationship with the banks. Make weekly deposits. That would help build a faster relationship with the banks instead of Buying net 30s. And speaking of net 30s or net 20s, okay, here's something else. Now, I am not, I am not a big fan of net 30s, okay? However, I believe in strategy, okay? I believe in strategy. So, in terms of, say that I'm going to open up a business bank account with Chase, now, I know that Chase reports to experience small business financial exchange done at Bradstreet and Equifax, right? So then I want to know what companies that I can actually leverage that's going to report to those same business credit bureaus. So then you have Shirtsy, but you have to be in business at least 90 days to get their account. You have Summa Office Supplies, which reports to Experian and Equifax. Plus, they give you a letter of recommendation to give to the other credit bureaus. So that's nice. Quill, the reason I have Quill on here instead of Granger, Seton, and Uline, again, because they have a mechanism in it that if anybody that's listening to this, put it in the comments. Do you know why Quill is more important than Granger, Seton, and Uline? Okay. Um, the thing about it is they report to Experian and Dunn and Bradstreet. Wise business plan. They report. Now, you don't have to get a business plan through them. They do have other business credit products that will still help you report. They report to Equifax, Experian, Dunn and Bradstreet. And then you have NAB. Now, with NAB, you either have to get their business boost or their business loan builder, but they report to Experian, Equifax, and Dunn and Bradstreet. Okay? So, I'm going to tell you this. You do not need a whole lot of net 30s. Like, people go through this tier system, right? And so, you got the first tier, second tier, third tier, and fourth tier. Because they're like, well, I'm trying to build a business credit so I don't have to do no PGN. Guess what? 90% of the time, when people try to get to that second tier, they end up PGN anyway. Okay, and the thing about it is you don't wasted a year, a year and a half, maybe two years trying to wait on these trade lines to report. Now, let me tell you something about what's happening in the industry, because a lot of people are not aware of this as well. Um, some of these companies, these uh, net term companies, some of them are taking longer to report. The reason is, is because there's no more one and done, okay? So it may, you may be wondering, well, I haven't seen my trade line show up on my file for 45 to 60 days. What's going on? Well, if you only purchase from them once, they more likely won't report, okay? So that's probably the reason why you're not seeing that. Now, number two is that some of these, um, accounts now, they're either charging a membership fee or a annual fee, okay? And so, by you joining their membership or annual fee or whatever, they're bringing in more revenue there. 
because they know that all you want is to report, right? That's the reason I told you about choosing the right business bank account as well, because you still can jumpstart your business credit just by making continued uh, weekly deposits, all right? So don't trip off of having a whole lot of net 30s, okay? It, it's, it's not necessary. Save that money. Get, all you need is about a good, um, I would say about four to five. Uh, if, you tr if you're really worried about a Dunn's number or whatever, but I'm telling you Dunn and Bradstreet it really isn't uh, as important as you think when it comes to funding. 98% of the time, most banks, they're not looking at Dunn and Bradstreet. They're looking at how's the credit, is the business profitable? Okay, those are the things that, that matters to them. A virtual office uh, doesn't matter to them. These days, most people are running million-dollar businesses out of their homes, okay? So that's the reason I'm telling you guys. You need to understand how to take that money you're going to buy more than that 30s with just to make the weekly deposits. Make weekly deposits, okay? Now, that being said, the first business credit card, I would tell you, if you if you have challenging credit or low credit, and once uh, you have that foundation of you, I would probably go after this card, the Capital One Spark Classic for Business, because it only needs a 580 credit score. Okay, so I would get this here card, uh, and they report they do pull FICO eight sometimes. Um, here, here's something that most people don't know. Say that you had a Capital One personal account, okay, and it was charged off and it's been over a year. That will not disqualify you from getting a business card, okay? As a matter of fact, sometimes you may be able to get a new uh, Capital One personal credit card after one year of charge off, okay? Now, Wells Fargo secured business credit card. Now, yes, you're using your own money and stuff, but yes, it reports to Small Business Financial Exchange, all right? So this is why you need these. This is the jumpstart of building business credit. Now, I know a lot of people, well, how do I get to the thousands of dollars or whatever? The thing about it, if you can't manage the small stuff, how are you going to manage the big stuff? And that's how banks look at it as well. If I gave you, um, if like that Capital One, if I get, if most people they would give them a three hundred dollars and they put it to the side. So if you can't prove to me that you actually can use three hundred dollars, how are you going to prove to me that you can use ten thousand dollars? And I keep telling people, no matter the amount, use it. Use it, pay it off as fast as possible and everything, and let it get that data into the system because it's going to help you build up your business credit score much faster, okay? Now, let's talk about Divi. Everybody's on Divi. Oh, man, let's go. Let me get the Divi. Let me get the Divi. Well, here's the thing about it. Divi has two systems, right? They have one with an instant line of credit. So if you have... a uh, enough established credit they do pull FICO 9 now for those of you who may not know the difference between your FICO 8 or FICO 9 or can't ex access your uh, FICO 8 FICO 9 I put a link below this video so that you can actually get your real FICO score because that way you're going to get your FICO 8 your FICO 9 your FICO 3 and 2 okay so that way you will know exactly as a matter of fact uh, if you want to actually a real analysis if you uh, use the link below this video to get your real FICO and schedule a 30-minute consultation I'll actually go over a, a personal credit analysis with you for free as well as share with you some of the possibilities of what other creditors you may want to approach for us trying to help you get business credit funding also. Now, here's the mistake a lot of people, if they don't get that uh, instant line of credit, uh, Divi will offer them the credit builder program, right? The business credit builder. And people will walk away. It's like, why would you do that? If you're trying to build your business credit, take it. Because it's still going to report, 
That's all you wanted to do is to report so it can help build up your business credit rating, right? So that way, the more reporting you have going on with your deposits, you have uh, the Capital One, you have the Wells Fargo, you have the Divi. Now, other institutions are starting to look at this. And now when you go to apply for other business credit cards, because on the back end, especially like if some of you all are trying to get an SBA loan and stuff like this, this is so important. You need to have that file built up in order to qualify. So for those of you that have applied for an SBA loan and you didn't have a 620 credit score or you didn't even have a small business financial exchange file, that's what uh, SBA pulls from, the Small Business Financial Exchange. So why not actually just do it so that puts you in a better position to get access to more cheap money, all right? So that's what you need to understand. Don't just walk away. Still, you're investing into the business, right? And you're trying to get more funding. Now, for those of you that may have more questions about building business credit, uh, trying to find the proper NAICS code, uh, trying to understand which is your most favorable banks, um, click the link below, uh, schedule one-on-one -on -one consultation, go to HoustonMcMiller.net, schedule a consultation, or go to three-way funding. Thank you.